There was a question about um, just books in terms of like learning about women. There's the women around the Prophet Sallallahu There's a, if you want something that's deeply philosophical, the Tao of Islam, the source book on, oh shoot, it, the Tao of Islam. It's, it's discussing a lot of the Sufi ideas of like, what does womanhood mean? Am I a woman in my soul? A lot of those discussions, she actually wrote it from an Eastern perspective because the Western perspective was apparently too difficult to, to work with where she was saying like, I, I would go through all of these discussions on like, you have to understand the Islamic ethos for you to understand how and why these rulings come about. And it was so difficult that she's like, I have to come, I have to literally cross the ocean, come from an Eastern perspective to be able to explain it. But I do want to say a lot, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I'm so grateful for female teachers. We have just as many female teachers in our communities as we do men. We just don't value their scholarship in the same way. We don't have a lack of this. And this is on every subject. Like I learned about like structural racism because I asked aunties in the masjid. I went to my aunties and I said, I, I know I'm at, like, also when you make a mistake and someone schools you, thank you, thank them for the free education. Because I didn't, I didn't know things. I, di I didn't actually, for a good chunk of my life, I didn't live in America. I had no idea. And then I would like, wait, other sisters don't know this. Come to the halakha. <laughs> Please teach us. Because how are we going to support each other if we don't know each other? And we don't value the scholarship that we have. I just, I know I'm tangenting, but there was a discussion on polygamy. I think it's important for us to make sure that we are putting it again within, the, within its context. The Prophet ﷺ married a number of women after the Battle of Uhud. They lost 7% of their male population in a day. This was a devastating day. And the stories about the Battle of Uhud, it's very difficult to get through them with, with, without just sobbing. The companions' children, radiallahu anhum, would come out and call for their fathers and cry when they didn't hear a response. They knew what happened. So the Prophet ﷺ started marrying a series of widows. When you look at a community that's under attack, because you're living in peace, you don't judge a community that's living under attack. Communities at war are different from communities at peace. And I want to say this because polygamy in, in, in America is far more common within the black community than it is in the immigrant community. Because one in four black men between the ages of 18 and 28 is in prison or on parole. This is a community under attack. And this isn't to say it's a blanket statement. Not every woman will, is willing to live with it. Some women, regardless of their backgrounds. In, in Yemen, it's actually very common. Like my, my sister-in-law's neighbor was trying to find her husband, his second wife. She's like, I might as well like her. And I was like, this is the craziest thing I've heard in my life. Different cultures do different things. The women in Mecca were willing to accept it. The women in Medina weren't. The Prophet ﷺ never insulted the women of Medina by taking more than one wife from Medina. It wasn't a part of their culture. And all of that is fine. We don't, I just want to make sure that we're not judging a community at war that is under attack the same way that we would judge a community in a place of peace. If Allah has gifted you something, alhamdulillah, don't look at your sister that's in a different situation and be like, oh, but I'm better. Ask her what that experience is like. She might enjoy her marriage far more than you ever dreamt of. And I've talked to some of these sisters. It's like, wow, you sound so amazing, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan.